Today on Rock the Park. Look at where we are right now. We're experiencing our favorite park in ways we've never done before. Working with a buddy, getting back what once seemed lost forever. Three, two, one. Let's go. Yeah. It's Glacier National Park, where people get inspired to push the boundaries of the possible. I admire you from the bottom of my heart. And it all starts right now. Yeah! I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These Man. are mountains! We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around Ooh. the world. Oh my Man. god. Heading off the beaten path, pushing our Ooh. limits, Ooh. and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go! <laughs> it's how we rock the park. Welcome to our favorite place on Earth. Glacier National Park blows us away every time we're here. Not just because of the challenges it throws down, but because of the difference it's made in our lives. It's so profound, the impact these places can have on you. It changed my life. Glacier National Park is located in the northwest corner of Montana, about 150 miles north of Missoula and the University of Montana, where we both went to college. Before I came to school out here, I personally had never seen mountains before. So when I drove through Missoula that first time, that was it. And instantly I knew that this was a place that I wanted to call home. The beauty of going to school out west, especially in a town like Missoula, is you've got the freedom to get out, to explore as much as you want. And you're surrounded by people who love to do the exact same thing. In fact, we are on our way to see one of our buddies who's literally going to be dropping in to say hello. Joe Stone is an athlete, an outdoorsman, and an incomplete C7 quadriplegic, which means he's paralyzed from the chest down with impairment in both his hands. Ready? Yep, let's do it. Nice one. There he is. Yep. There he is. Oh, man, he's just soaring. Oh, that's got to be so cool. Joe's also an avid paraglider, and in 2010, it was a speed flying accident near this very spot that damaged his spinal cord. For the last seven years, he's been working his way back into the active outdoor life that he loves, proving to the world that a disability doesn't have to tie you down. It just means learning new ways of doing things. Three years after the crash, Joe was the first known quadriplegic to compete in a grueling Ironman competition. And one year later, he was soaring again, using a lightweight wheelchair with custom hand controls. Man, he can maneuver that thing like it's nothing. Oh, man. Several years ago, we went whitewater rafting with Joe and Glacier, and now we want to help him achieve another milestone, hiking and camping in the backcountry. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, man. What's up, man? Wow. <laughs> How are going? you, bud? So good. So good. I can imagine. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Oh, that is epic. It's hard not to have smiles after something like that. Yeah, holy cow. I know how hard you worked to be able to get back to doing this. How great does it feel to be up there flying again? It's amazing, yeah. right? You're in the air. You're flying. You're doing what so many people dream. So we got a lot of planning to do. What do you guys say? Do you want to grab some lunch and we can talk about heading up to Glacier? Yeah, man, let's get after it. Lots of questions. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> this trip to Glacier will test all of us. Joe will attempt his first backcountry camping trip since his injury. Always have him pointing up. But first, he's going to teach us a new way of ascending the park's famous going to the sun road by hand cycling. For me, right after my accident, I wanted to be independent within one year. So from there, I set the goal to hand cycle the Going to the Sun Road one day before the one year anniversary of my accident. Had to find the equipment, had to do, so by the time I got the equipment, I had three months to train. Joe met his deadline, hand cycling straight up Logan Pass, the highest point on the Sun Road. And it changed my whole life. 
It's just another example of how these national parks can alter the course of your life and really make a big impact. All of us are getting firsts here, you know? We're, we're trying out these hand cycles for the first time. I've never even biked on the Going to the Sun Road. So that's gonna be big for us, and you're getting to get back out into uh, the backcountry. There's something about Glacier that when you're standing in awe of those mountains, it says you can do something that maybe you didn't think that you could do. Just do an epic weekend in Glacier. We're getting an early start in the morning, partly to beat the traffic and the heat and partly because this could be a long, long day. This is definitely tough. My arms are burning, and we're not even on the toughest incline yet. Let's crush it, dudes. It's dawn in Glacier National Park, and we're on the Going to the Sun Road about to attempt something we've never done before. At 53 miles long, the road winds through the heart of Glacier, eventually reaching its highest point, Logan Pass. We've driven this road many times, but today we'll be cycling the steepest section of it using our hands instead of feet. I'm pumped to do this. I've never gone hand cycling before. Uh, we won't know how it's gonna be until we just get out there and start doing it. Our buddy Joe Stone is waiting for us at the Jackson Glacier Open, about five miles below Logan Pass. Good morning. Joe knows this route very well. One year after his accident, he cycled 30 miles to reach the top. These are the rigs. They're low to the ground, like I said. And When you said low to the ground, I actually was not imagining this low. That's real low. Yeah. You're right there. Yeah, right. it's about three inches of clearance. Recumbent cycles are low to the ground for better stability. Instead of using our legs to pedal, we'll be using our arms. It's like taking a regular bike, flipping it upside down, turning it backwards, and putting it on three wheels. Joe gives us a quick run through on using the cycles, and then we have to prep and head out. All right, Joe, we'll okay. follow you. Sounds good. Let's do it, boys. The five miles to Logan Pass are a steady 6% grade the whole way, ascending 1,300 feet. It's slow going and really, really tough. We're maybe a couple hundred yards into this and already I can just feel my arms just getting that workout. Right now, the thought of even going five miles is extremely daunting. One good thing about this slow pace, you notice things you might miss zipping along in a car. Hey guys. If you can turn your head, there's the big shadow of the moon about to go behind the mountains. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Good eye, man. That's really beautiful. Rocky Mountain goats make a regular appearance along this road. The name is misleading. These shy cliff dwellers aren't really goats. They're more related to antelopes and gazelles. And bighorn sheep are also easy to spot. They really are sheep, but extra big. A bighorn ram stands almost four feet tall and weighs about 300 pounds. And that's about how much my arms feel like they're lifting by now. This is definitely tough. My arms are burning. And we're not even on really the toughest incline yet. It becomes a mental game. I just want to get up to that tree 50 yards ahead. Joe's rolling along, but we need a break. It's only when we pull off the road and look below us that we realize how far we've come. Two and a half miles, more than halfway to the top. Do you guys see through the trees there? You can see the road a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. So when you see cars going through there and they look like little ants, man, we've come a long way. Dang, we have. Just pull that straight out. And then we hit a snag. Joe's front tire suddenly goes flat. This is my first flat tire in 6,000 miles of hand cranking. Luckily for all of us, Joe is prepared. He has thought out every aspect of this bike ride. He's got spare tubes, he's got wrenches, tools. These are things that I never in a million years would have thought to pack. Got a hard tire. Back in order. Sweet. The closer we get to Logan Pass, the steeper the road gets. Just keeps getting tougher and tougher. And I'm finally at that point where my arms, it's just like a struggle to keep it moving forward. I kind of thought this might happen a lot further down the road. So I'm positive I'm going to make it. 
Oh man, we're so close. Nice we're right thing there. is you know you got it, man. So it's like, time doesn't matter. We got it, you know? We got it. All right, here we go. No more breaks? No more breaks. Let's crush it, dudes. You gotta finish strong, right? That's right. Oh man. You got it, just breathe. Focus on breathing. Right. You guys. Yes. We made it. it. We did it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, man. <laughs> Give me some love. Yeah. Right on, dude. Sweet. Woo. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Yeah, dudes. Oh, oh, I cannot believe we made it. Proud of you guys, man. <laughs> We've reached the highest place in the park you can reach by road. And it just so happens to be the crest of the Continental Divide. I love the challenge of the uphill. I'm excited for the downhill. But guys, look at where we are right now. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, this is the crown jewel of the continent. It's just such a different way to be able to get out there and experience this park. And it's unlike any other way we've done it. I think about you yesterday saying how when you set this goal for yourself, you had no idea if you could even achieve it. But you pushed yourself beyond a point that maybe you ever had before, and you did it. Well, that's the beauty of it all. It can happen in so many different ways. It doesn't matter if you have a disability, if you're old, you're young, you're able-bodied, it's chasing that emotion. Yeah. That's what we did today. Now for the fun part, going down the mountain. A brief respite before we head into the backcountry, where once again, Joe proves a disability doesn't need to tie you down. Today, we're hiking through a part of Glacier National Park that we've never visited. And our buddy Joe Stone is reclaiming part of his life he once thought was gone forever. I'm pumped, man. This has been almost seven years to the day since the last time I was in the backcountry. So That's I'm pretty crazy. excited to get back in there. Joe swapped out his road cycle for an off-road version with mountain bike tires. There we go. He's loaded his camping gear onto his wheelchair and pulling it behind like a trailer. I see you've got bear spray, we've got bear spray. Needed. We're headed into grizzly country, yeah. so it's always. Again, with the unknowns, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, should we do it? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. We're hiking a four mile trail to the shore of Lake McDonald. Along the way, we'll see areas of the park that were badly damaged by fire in 2003. Oh man, this forest looks great. Yeah. I kind of feel like I could see a grizzly in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But don't you always kind of get that feeling anywhere you are in Glacier? Of the 1,500 grizzlies living in the lower 48 states, most are here and in Yellowstone. They prefer to avoid people, so hikers are advised to make plenty of noise when hiking through grizzly country. That's easy to do if you're hand cycling this trail. I'll be shocked if a bear comes our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. <laughs> After about 10 minutes, the trail moves uphill. Most hikers would barely notice it. For Joe, it's the first of many problems to solve. So the main thing, guys, is yeah. push the wheels if you can. But I think we'll be all right if we just kind of work together. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So this is going to dip down pretty far. Slow here. Okay, we got that. Cool. Yeah, baby. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next hill is a little steeper and a lot rockier. Okay, so what are you thinking? My frame is too low to the ground to be able to clear that rock. We'll have to pull the right wheel over the rock. This is the biggest test that this setup has had, yeah. so this will tell us a lot with how secure it is. Okay. I'll let go of the brake. All right, yep. we got you. And start cranking. Left wheel's over. Yep. Okay. My feet are clearing it. Okay, frame's clearing it. Yep, frame's good for now. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, so we got that one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So let's do a little bit more cranking. Okay, hold up now. Now we got the wheelchair. Wheelchair is cleared. Let's set it down. All right, cool. We're good. Yeah, yeah right. we're good. Three, two, one. Let's go. Yeah. Here we go. Nice, dude. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. That's great. 
We've reached the crest of this ridge, and Lake McDonald is below us. Now that we're up a little bit, you're getting different views, too. And you can see the remnants of the 2003 fire. And you can easily see where new life is springing up. I mean, this is Mother Nature at its finest, taking care of itself, you know? It's almost like the trees are like that skeleton of the old forest. And then it's so cool to see that new forest coming up below mm -hmm. it. From here, it's all downhill to reach Lake McDonald. But the trail is still rugged, and the new forest growth isn't tall enough to give us any relief from the afternoon sun. Next shade spot I could use a, yeah. a moment. What's uncomfortable for us is risky for Joe. One side effect of his injury, his body no longer sweats, so he has to avoid getting overheated and drink plenty of water. Woo! Take a little breather. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a harder trail than I thought it was gonna be. We have maybe come across, I would say, like three patches <laughs> of shade in the last three miles. Hopefully our campsite is right next to Lake McDonald. It'll be majestic. Even though it's downhill to the lake, this last mile of trail is going to hit us with the hardest obstacles we've seen all day. So, how do you think we hit this? Yeah. We're in the last mile of what's turned out to be a grueling backcountry hike with our buddy Joe through Glacier National Park. All right, so we are bearing down on camp right now. We're helping Joe push through some of these obstacles, but mostly the heat is what's holding us up. Right now it is unseasonably hot here in Glacier. It's in the upper 90s. With the trail sloping down toward the lake, there are no more hills to climb, but we aren't home free yet. So, how do you think we hit this? You know, I think I might be able to roll it on my own. I'm gonna go over this log right to the left of the rock right after it. Mm -hmm. And just gonna try to keep my momentum and uh, push right through it. Yeah, I get a little push. Yep, yep. One, two, three. Cool. Cheer. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. All right. One obstacle down, but we're still not out of the woods. Oh, boy. I'm gonna stop in the shade for a minute and problem solve for Yeah. If we're looking at this log, there's a lot of things that if we fell on, that probably wouldn't be awesome. The thing I don't wanna do is have you guys lift me and have either one of you fall and all of us fall, or you twist an ankle because we out of weight. And if one of you guys get hurt, that puts us all in a risky spot. Yeah, yeah totally. Joe comes up with a solution that's simple and kind of obvious, but only after he shows us. Nice. This is probably the best grip, yeah. All right. You good? Yeah. Yep. All right. Home stretch. This campsite is going to be worth the struggle. Oh, for sure. <laughs> wow. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. I'm going to call this good. This is good. Yeah, man. Oh right on. Gosh. Uh, that was very, very challenging. Yeah, that was a lot more than I thought I was getting into, for sure. I gotta ask you this, how does it feel to be back in the back country? It's amazing. I'll be honest with you guys, almost seven years ago, my perspective on life was I didn't think I'd be able to do anything. In the last three days, I paraglided off my hometown mountain, landed right next to you guys. Yeah! And we went and cranked the Going Sun Road. And now we're in a backcountry site for the first time since my accident. I mean, I never could have ever imagined that I could do any of it individually, let alone cram it into three days of excitement. Well, the national parks are a place for you to push yourself, to be inspired, to go beyond what you think your limitations are, and then you create such amazing memories. For me personally, there is no place on earth that I feel the level of inspiration that I feel when I'm here at Glacier. And honestly, man, you inspire me so much. I admire you, and man, from the bottom of my heart, it, it keeps me going looking at you, seriously. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, that's, that's straight to my heart. That means a lot. I'm kind of speechless. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> that. Like, that just really means a lot. And remember, 
If we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.